me handsome. You never knew. I've been a handsome motherfucker, but the things I do, the quality of my life, that's what makes me the real handsome man. So if you thought I was handsome, you were 100% correct. I'm daddy. Okay. That was a loud ass joint. That was a lot of shit. Hey yo, hey yo. I need everybody here to pay a fuck attention. Y'all hear me? Y'all hear me, right? It's my motherfucking nigga Witty Rock right here. Yeah. We go by 9% cat. And to make sure that y'all paying attention, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say cat, and y'all gonna yell that shit back at me. Cat! Realize you had what it takes to rap professionally, or are you still just fucking around with it? Man, I don't, I can't rap. When I was doing my little freestyle videos, man, back then I was taking it serious. Then, man, I, I feel like I never, I never stopped taking it serious as soon as I started anything with music. It's like we would record, and like we was really like during that first period of time, we was really just like cranking them out, like. At nighttime, crank like two, three songs. I just have a beat. We all just be sitting there writing, like, you done, you done. 30 minutes later, we go in there, everybody lay their shit down, and we're just proud of it. What did I realize? Uh, when I had, when I started a rap beef and I won, so don't come at the kid. And then people was really vibing with the shit. And then, like, when I would listen to other people's shit, I'm like, yo. I can see exactly what can be done better here. And um, I mean, shit. No better way than to, to have what I really want to hear than to do the shit. So that's how the shit started. That's when I started taking it serious. It was high school, junior year. I believe I was 17 years old. And there was a real popular, well, he wasn't popular, but he was the only rapper the school provided. And he was trash. Well, he wasn't trash, but he was like, you know, it's like, eh. And I knew I had I had it in me to, to do it, so I just got fed up one day because they kept praising him. So I downloaded the ether beat and I eth I ethered his ass, fried it like motherfucking I don't know, but I went in and I went from being the the nerdy ass, not even nerdy, but just like the Asian kid that nobody really talked to, to being the motherfucking man. You feel me, like motherfuckers, like yo, you killed his ass, yo. And after that, you feel me, it just all went uphill, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, down, I, I don't know. But whatever's good, it got better, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to hear me record it. <laughs> so, nah, that's what that bitch be doing. Alright, so, what is still? Is that you? Still ain't, still, still ain't nigga shit. Alright, I'm going to move this to a different... Uh, file look, oh, folder location because you kind of blowing me right now. So I'm gonna put this in the Reaper Media. Now you ever notice that you just don't look as good in pictures that you aren't prepared for? Nigga, hell yeah. Still at a point where I'm like, I'm trying to build myself up to a point. I'm a hundred percent. Rap is my bread and butter. It's the way I feed myself. I want them to know this shit represents forward thinking, power. You know what I mean? Not really sitting around waiting for what you need and want. Just take it. Not necessarily on no illegal gangster shit, but like, just in life, like, make shit happen. Don't let it happen. And I just want motherfuckers to not have to, ooh, feet. Just to not, <laughs> to not have to, like, you feel me, be scared to, like, just do some different shit. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, and I don't know, man. It's like, I want, like, people not to feel like they have to be accepted that the most important thing is to accept yourself. Yeah, the, the main message I want to push is mainly positivity, of course. 
You feel me? I feel like I'm like a hippie in the sense of spreading that vibe, that positive vibe, you feel me? And uh, basically stay away from all the bullshit that's in the world and find your little bubble and do your own thing and let that shine on everybody else. No fucking copycatting. Everything's been done, understandable, but you shouldn't see the next man be like, you know what? That's my shit. And I'ma do it, and I'ma do it better than him. It's like, nah, that's whack. Like, do your own shit. Instead of doing what's cool, make what you're doing what's cool, and make people follow suit. Hey, you Jew, I Jew, we both Jew together. What gets me in my creative mode the most is really positivity. It's, it sounds hella cliche, but it really is. Like when I get good feedback about something, like when I have fans or blogs or a and or whatever, label or something like that reach out to me, like I fuck with this shit or I see your potential, it's like, okay, I get excited so it makes me wanna like prove them right. Like, okay, yeah, I am nice. Let me show you what I can do. My time at Hot Town specifically, I wanted to make sure I wasn't lacking and look like the, the, the weakest guy on the project. I wanted to make sure that motherfuckers got a healthy dose of my beautiful ass. You feel me? And they fully understood what the deal was because y'all motherfuckers, because you know, I was the newest addition. New kid on the block had to pave his way. If I'm going through it, it's got to get written down or else ain't no point in me doing music because I'm going to be telling somebody else's story. So I, that goes into it. Then I go back in the show, I take a little bit of freak fantasy in there, you know what I mean? And twist that in with the reality. And then, I just say some shit I know the niggas is gonna relate with. It's gonna make them feel cool, but it's still like true to me, you know what I mean? Like kinda put niggas on game a little bit with my music, but you still gonna get my reality with it, and you still gonna get that sick, twisted, I guess humor or something with my shit. But, that's what comes out, gives you way go, every single time. Like I said, basically, uh. In my camp because I, I would like tell them that most of the most of the songs on there I would like say hey put y'all let me hear y'all verse first so I can like have something to rock off first and they would send me something with a verse already on there some idea and I put my idea on there and she was like more of a, a friendly competitive vibe with it. Pop yourself in the room unfollow all these people that you think you copying off of you know create your own lane. That nigga's dancing was so fucking crazy, yo. I never wanted to see that shit again. <laughs> yo, especially in the, uh, the Baltimore's finest one. Yo, you gotta... Nah, you gotta go to the only... You gotta watch the Baltimore one. Cause the moment the caption was like, Baltimore takes the over Atlanta, it was like... Like, nah, fam. <laughs> nah, fam. What's this hood called? What's it known for? It's known for 9% mastermind camp. Okay. 9% okay. black mastermind camp, even though we got Asians in there. So it's like they catch a lot of bodies around here, I'm guessing. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's real gutter. You don't want to get caught around here at the wrong time, wrong people. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I heard a lot about here. All that shit, right? <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm about to get my motherfucking shit right though. Right, right. Y'all trying to get y'all shit right though? Yeah, hurry. Yeah, it's on uh Campsite9.com, but fuck that though. It's about this right now. Stop my fucking nigga, what he rockin' 9%? Camp here. Yeah. And this song is big to all the motherfuckers in the back of the field. What? Say, I hate a trendy bitch in the worst. Second thing I wanna get across this. I support trees, wouldn't hurt me. I be cheating, don't they cushy with the. Yeah, creatively. Yeah. 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 You know, like, and it was a point where I thought the drugs helped me do that shit, but it's it's definitely past that. Like, really, like I said, like my inspiration comes from shit I gotta deal with today, tomorrow, and next week, and in the past. So it's like that's really that shit stays there. All I gotta do is really think about it. I mean, I guess weed will help that. Like, as far as like just opening my mind up to that shit, but like that's that's how I get in my mood. Just really like if if. To be honest, if everything was easy right now and everything was just going how I wanted it to, I probably wouldn't have shit to say. But since I'm so frustrated and got so much to need to get done, and I'm always already thinking about this shit, I just make it rhyme, and uh, shit works out for me. Uh, you 
for me, depending on what type of Kush, what type of haze, you know, sativa, indica, you know, depending on how that makes me feel. I may go off that vibe or fight it and, you know, create some whole different energy. Either getting extremely sad, <laughs> you feel me, or extreme, or either letting emotions do their thing, or when you feel it, and when I feel it, I, I want to write and make music and shit, man. God damn it, this shit's too tough. Son of a bitch! <laughs> Keep all that in there, man. Skip! I remember when you doubted it, they forget about it. 